Welcome to the virtual college fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website where you registered. And now I'd love to turn it over to our presenters. Thank you, Anna. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Rachel Sloan. I am an assistant director of admissions at Allegheny College. Um, I am going to be doing the presentation today. Um, before we begin, um, I am joined by one of our students, um, Hannah. And so, Hannah, if you want to take just a moment to introduce yourself, um, maybe share what year you're in, what you're from, um, what you're studying, and some of the things you might be involved in on campus. All right. Um, my name is Hannah, and I am a sophomore here at Allegheny. Um, at Allegheny, I am majoring in environmental science and sustainability with a minor in education studies. And on campus, I'm also very involved in the music department here. Thanks, Hannah. All right, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I'm sharing my screen so that everyone can see. Um, we only have about 45 minutes. And so what I'm going to try and, uh, and do is just cover some of the basics about Allegheny. Um, at the very end of the presentation, my contact information will be available. So if you wanna write that down um, in case you have any follow-up questions, feel free to do so and reach out anytime. Um, and with that, we'll begin. Um, so this is the presentation for Allegheny College. Um, Allegheny College was founded in 1815. That makes us the 32nd oldest college in the nation. And so we're really, really proud of our rich history. Um, but we also don't like to rest in that history. We are recognized for um, being amongst the nation's most innovative national liberal arts colleges as well. And so it's a really interesting mix of history and tradition, but also moving forward um, with the global world that we're living in today. A little bit of kind of um, by the numbers, um, we are about 1800 students, completely undergraduate. Um, one of the advantages of being a completely undergraduate institution is that um, we, are focusing solely on our undergraduate students. Um, and there's a lot of opportunities, research being um, one of them. And we'll talk a little bit about research in a little bit, um, where we are really treating you like graduate students and giving you access to some of those resources, but you're not competing against graduate students for those same opportunities. 100% um, of our students do live on campus. And about 60% of those students are actually coming from outside the state of Pennsylvania, which is really nice. Um, so you're going to live in a community of people, not only from all over the United States, also all over the world. Um, our student faculty represent about 70 different countries in addition to the United States. Um, so you all will live together on campus in something college owned. Um, definitely, if you guys have questions about residence life, we can answer some of those at the end. I'm sure Hannah, since she is a student who lives on campus, can talk a little bit about that. Um, our average class size is about 18 students. Um, which gives us about 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So nice small class sizes. Your professor is going to know your name. Um, you know, you're not really going to have a, a lecture hall size class or anything like that. A lot of seminar style based courses um, and really interactive hands on learning experience. Some other things that we really like to talk about is we're um, a school that's pretty friendly to first generation students. Right now, about 28% of our students do identify as first generation college students, which is something we're really proud of. Um, and similarly, just about 30% um, of our student body self identifies as um, domestic students of color. Um, the other thing we're really, really proud of that's uh, very recent to us is uh, we became carbon neutral this past January. So we are the eighth college in the US, the very first in Pennsylvania and among some of the first of our size to achieve this. Um, we do have the number four um, environmental science program in the country and sustainability in general is just a really big part of what we do on campus, whether it's in our dining halls and our residence halls um, or in the classroom. So if you're really interested in sustainability or environmental initiatives, this is definitely um, a place that you should consider. The other really um, big kind of piece on this slide that I want to point out is colleges that change lives. 
If you have not used this resource in your college search, I highly recommend it. Um, Colleges That Change Lives is a book. There's also a website. Um, very simply put, Colleges That Change Lives is a group of about 40 odd schools. You have to be invited. You can't just apply to be a part of the group. Um, and it's a list of schools that's not necessarily known for kind of all these measurable, you know, kind of numeric metrics, but rather what students are saying about their experience. Um, and so Allegheny has been a part of that book since its inception. And there's some really uh, great colleges that might be unknown to you as well in that book. If you are going to apply to colleges at Change Life School, you can also apply for scholarships. Um, that's a part of something on their website. There are scholarships, particularly for colleges that change life institutions. So this is kind of by the numbers. I want to talk about, however, a few things um, that make Allegheny a little bit unique and that we really pride ourselves on as far as the academic experience. Um, the first is that major and minor combination. And I'm actually gonna flip ahead real quickly so that you guys can take a look at this slide while I talk. One of the things that every student that comes to Allegheny should expect is to complete both a major and a minor area of study before they graduate from Allegheny. You have to declare that major and minor combination by the time uh, you are in the second semester of your sophomore year. So this makes us very friendly to students who come in right away and know exactly what they're interested in doing, but also really friendly to students that are still deciding or maybe have a couple ideas bouncing around in their head or maybe have absolutely no idea what they're really looking to major or minor in. And that's okay. Our curriculum is designed to help students figure out what that combination is going to be and how it's gonna best serve their interests in, possible careers that they want to do. Uh, the reason that you see these circles on the screen is because your major and minor has to come from two different overarching academic areas of study. So those would be your humanities, your natural sciences, your social sciences, or something interdivisional. Interdivisional is just a really fancy word that means those areas of study don't fit really cleanly in the humanities, natural sciences, or social sciences. They really pull from all of that coursework uh, to create their areas of study. So to give you some examples, um, say you want to be a biology major, that would be a natural science. So then your minor would come from a humanities, a social science, or something interdivisional. Why in the world do we make you do that? Why can't you just pick any two things that you absolutely want to? Great question. Um, there's a couple of reasons. The first is we're looking for students who have a love of learning, which probably means you like more than one subject. And we're hoping that means that you're branching out um, into a variety of different subjects that you wanna explore more. And so, you know, chances are you're not looking to live in one box and we don't want you to live in one academic box the whole time you're here. Secondly, um, there's very few careers where you're going to go out into the field and actually work with people who only studied the exact same thing that you did. Um, you're probably going to work with people that have a lot of different academic backgrounds. And so it's really important to understand different ways of thinking, um, especially in an extremely global world. Um, you need to understand how people with different um, skill sets might work um, so that you can work well with them. And we also want you to develop your skill sets, right? So if you're really, really good at, you know, math and problem solving and kind of logistical thinking, you know, maybe you're really strong in the natural sciences, but we also want you to be able to apply, you know, really strong writing skills and research skills and public speaking skills. And so we're going to push you to really take some other areas of study to figure out how things are connected. We also offer some pre-professional programs. We have just a couple of them listed there. You'll see pre-law, pre-med, pre-education would be um, great examples. We can talk about those in a little bit. Um, and we also have the ability for students to self-design majors too. So if you think that Allegheny has a lot of courses to support a major or a minor you're interested in pursuing, but you don't actually see it written into the curriculum, that's okay. We can still help you. Um, you can meet with the curriculum committee and self-design that particular area of study. There's just a couple um, listed on this screen, in the bottom left um, that you can see as well. So major minor requirement is something that every student in Allegheny um, has to decide again by the second semester of your sophomore year. Um, a few other things that make us fairly unique. Um, undergraduate research is a really big part of our identity. 
Um, we did receive the Kerr Award beginning um, in 2016 as the number one baccalaureate institution for undergraduate research. Um, every student at Allegheny does complete an original piece of research before they graduate. Um, our students affectionately refer to this as the COMP, which is short for Senior Comprehensive Project. Um, it is in your field, but you get to pick your topic. So our hope is that over the course of four years, something in your major really stands out to you. There's an issue you want to explore more, something you want to dive a little bit deeper in. Um, and you'll uh, collaborate with a faculty member to design a research project. So it'll have some sort of hands-on piece. So for example, maybe a theater major might write and direct a play. Maybe a creative writer will do a collection of poetry. Um, a global health studies major might actually go down to the Meeple Medical Center and pair with some patients and do some population research. Um, you know, you might have someone in biology doing, you know, lab work that you think of more traditionally. You can really be as creative as you want to, um, as long as it meets the requirements for academic research. Then you will write about what you figured out. Did things work? Did they not work? What did you figure out about your topic? How did you do it? What might you change? All sorts of different things that'll depend a little bit on what your project is. And then you'll sit down um, with a couple of faculty members. Um, some of them will have been involved in your project. Some of them, they will have never heard your project before. Um, and you do a defense of your project. So you really become the expert and they just kind of ask you questions, um, you know, about your research. And so you actually become the, the teacher um, in that aspect, which is really nice. So every student is guaranteed at least that one research opportunity. Um, we have been doing that research project for over 200 years. So we're very good at what we do. It's something that we are nationally recognized for. However, a lot of students will do research before they reach their senior year. Um, we do have um, something called the ACROSS series, which is something that happens um, during the summer. Roughly in a traditional summer, about 100 odd students um, will be on campus throughout different points in the summer, most of them having a stipend to conduct research. So whether it's an independent research study, maybe they're pairing with other students or a faculty, um, going to different conferences to present. Um, and so you can do that as early as you're you know, having finished your first year at Allegheny. Um, so some students will do that, you know, every summer and they'll be a part of three, four, five research projects by the time they've graduated. You can also do research during your academic year by, you know, collaborating with a faculty member. Um, we also have a lot of students that over the summer, um, for example, I had an intern who got a fellowship to go down um, at the University of Alabama to do biochemistry research for the summer. So it doesn't necessarily even have to be on Allegheny's campus. Um, and so we can talk in a little bit about how to get connected to those opportunities, but research is ever growing in importance. And so we are a school that really values that and is recognized for research. And so um, our ability to help students through that is pretty unique. The last kind of uh, big academic thing that I would like to talk about is experiential learning. This is pretty much the core of Allegheny's academic experience is hands-on taking what you're doing in the classroom and applying it as a student, not waiting to get your job or your career to figure out how it applies to the real world. Um, the picture that you see there is actually um, a sailing excursion that students took on Lake Erie, which I believe is part of an environmental science um, seminar course, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. Um, and so it might be everything from you know, learning about, you know, um, your ecosystems at our, excuse me, at our college-owned nature preserve. It might be that you get paired at the Meeple Medical Center if you're a student, you do global health, pre-med, something that actually working with patients. Um, it's everything from speakers and conferences um, to internship opportunities. You know, some of our, for example, maybe you're an economics class that goes um, and sits with different boards of directors at their companies and learns about what it's like to run a business. Um, I'm definitely, you know, at the end of the presentation, I'll let Hannah kind of jump in if she's had any, you know, classes or anything that have done a lot of this um, experiential learning, but we're really big, you know, getting out there and getting your hands dirty, you know, with what you're learning in the classroom. Um, I'm going to jump back ahead um, to the slide where we were looking at the major and minors. Um, because obviously you're going to have some classes that are going to be required in your major and minor. Um, and aside from that, Allegheny has one other major class requirement, and that is called your seminar courses. 
You might hear students refer to them as FS courses, which is short for first year seminar. Sometimes that name just carries through. Um, we talked a little bit about having to do that senior research project. These courses are really your building block for that senior research project. So they especially focus in your writing, research, and public speaking skills. Um, and you'll take basically a different building block of that every year you're a student. So in your first year, you'll take a first year seminar course, and it's really about transitioning those skills from high school to college and really getting acquainted with those academics at Allegheny. That professor of that course in your first year is also your first academic advisor until you declare your major and get to ask you know, a professor um, in that department. These faculty are specifically selected for first year advising. Um, so they, you know, besides helping you choose your major and minor and transition those skills, they also might do things like take you to the library um, so that you can learn how to use the research database, for example, and really introduce you to different resources around campus. Um, and what's really nice about these classes in your first year is you can take them in any subject you want to. It doesn't have to be in an intended major. Um, some past examples, um, there's been like the biology of Shakespeare, um, 80s cartoons, music and horror films, um, spy and espionage, bread making. They're in really interesting subjects. Um, and I'm sure Hannah can definitely share her experience with them at the end of the presentation. That's something most students uh, classify these as some of their favorite courses. Um, over time at Allegheny. Um, as a second year student, you'll start to take them either if you've declared your major, specifically your new major, or at least in that overarching academic field. So if you think, for example, you're gonna go into the social sciences, you'll at least definitely take one in the social sciences and start to work on those skills, you know, more related to your major. As in your junior year, you're definitely taking one in your major. And that's gonna be a research heavy focus where you'll really start a lot of the prep work for that senior project. And then your, you know, seminar as a senior is your senior project. We're going to put those skills to the test. Um, and so, you know, you've been doing all the steps to build up to be prepared. And then, you know, you're actually going to carry forth that project as a senior. So quick recap, three things every student can definitely expect in their academic journey at Allegheny would be choosing a major and a minor, doing those seminar courses, and doing your senior research project. Um, other than that, there is a lot of flexibility to take other courses, you know, outside of your major and minor and get involved in ways to enhance the academic experience, but those are three of the core things. Um, the last kind of big academic thing that I want to talk about is the Gateway. This is one of your most valuable resources at Allegheny. The Gateway is located in our library. Um, the easiest way to describe what the Gateway is, is it is the place you go um, I don't say like to pad your resume, but to figure out how to take all the things you're learning and get those experiential things. Um, so for example, if you are going to apply, you know, for a job that requires a degree in political science, for example, great, you go apply for that job. Everyone else also applying for that job has a degree in political science too. So what's going to make you different? That's kind of really where the experiences of the gateway come into play. Um, and it's all the different offices you see here. So for education, that's everything from choosing your major to practicing for job interviews to the resume doctors to help you, you know, do your resume. Civic engagement and community service is going to be something that's really important to you. Um, and if anyone wants to talk afterwards, send me an email. Um, we are a school that is a part of the Bonner program, which is service opportunities with scholarships. So if service is something really that you wanna dedicate yourself to, we should definitely talk about those opportunities um, individually. International education. So that's everything from, you know, most people think about study abroad, which it definitely is, but it's also ways to get involved with our international population on campus. Um, that's just as important as your abroad experiences. Pre-professional advising. Um, so if you're thinking about graduate school, we mentioned a few of those opportunities like pre-med, pre-health, pre-education, any post-secondary program you're interested in exploring, they will help you um, not only chart your coursework, but they'll help you with your applications, any practice graduate school interviews, anything that you need. Nationally competitive fellowships. Um, some examples that you might recognize might be things like Rhodes Scholars, Fulbright Scholars, things like that, all come out of the Nationally Competitive Fellowships Office. Um, so they'll help you with any prep work like that. Allegheny um, boasts a very high percentage of recipients across the board for those types of scholarships um, for our student body size. So something to definitely pay attention to. 
Um, we talked about research, so we abbreviate, we love our acronyms at Allegheny, the Undergraduate Research Scholarship and Creative Activities Office, better known as ERSCA. Um, so that's a place where you can definitely connect for like that summer cross series and things that I was speaking about. Um, it's one of two locations for the IDEA Center, the other is in the Campus Center. IDEA stands for Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, Access, and Social Justice. So any of those causes, if something you want to get involved in, this is a, a tangible foothold where you can, you know, kind of come together communally to figure out um, how you'd like to participate. And the Center for Political Participation, um, kind of self-explanatory, but if you're interested in political-based activities, um, that office resides there as well. What kind of makes the Gateway extra unique is all these offices are in one place. So if you're looking, for example, um, for an internship and maybe you need funding because it's going to be in New York City and it's unpaid, so you need, you know, money to, to for food and, and housing, um, and you're really interested in having a research component, you can walk into the Gateway and sit down with a representative from career education, scholarships and fellowships, and ERSCA all at one time instead of having to run between all the offices and different buildings in different locations to find those opportunities that best match what you're looking for. Um, you can access the gateway as early as your first year. You don't need to wait till you're an upperclassman. Um, those opportunities are available for everybody. All right, so we spent quite a bit of time on academics because they're important, but um, just as important as what you're gonna do um, when you're not in the classroom. So this slide says we have over 120 clubs and organizations. Um, I'm pretty sure we're pushing well on our way to like 150 or so. We're, I think, getting pretty close. Um, and so these are just a couple pictures from, you know, the wealth of clubs that we have. Most students are probably involved, I'd say, over their time at Allegheny, pretty heavily, about three to four kind of core clubs. But a lot of students will bounce around and try a lot of different things who don't have to have participated in a particular organization in high school or you know, before coming to Allegheny in order to participate. Um, so that's everything from creative and performing arts clubs, which you can have scholarship money towards even if you don't major in minor. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, anything involving the outdoors here is really big because of our location. Um, so there you see you know, people doing whitewater rafting. Our outdoors club is usually our first or second biggest club every year next to Orcasis, which is our student run dance company. Um, we have a lot of different, um, you see like women in science, so academic based clubs, a lot of different honor societies there. We have uh, social and academic Greek organizations and a service Greek organization. Um, intramural and club sports are really big here. Um, we also do have varsity athletics. We have 23 different varsity level teams. Um, we do compete division three. Um, we also have a lot of different diversity organizations and things on campus as well. So you see kind of a, a very quick overview of like general club headings um, on your screen. The full list is available on our student life page as well on our website. So if you're looking for something in particular though and can't find it, definitely let us know, um, but lots of ways to get involved. Um, so what are students doing after Allegheny, right? Um, that's usually a big question. You come, you have a great Allegheny experience, but then what's going on? So about 60% of our students are employed straight after graduation. Of those 60%, about 95% are hired within six months of graduation. A lot of those students do know what they're gonna do actually before they walk across the stage at graduation. Um, about 30% of our students will go straight to graduate or some sort of professional school. Um, we do send more than 30% of our graduates onto graduate school, but that's roughly the number that decides to go straight from Allegheny um, to graduate programs. You might notice there that we do have um, doubled the national average acceptance rates into medical and law school. So the national average runs usually around 35%. Um, our acceptance rates there range usually about 80 to 100% or so every year. Um, it's been well over 90% the past couple years. Um, if you're really interested in um, learning more about some of our partnership programs and things as well for medical and law schools or you know, any sort of pre-professional programs, um, definitely check out our website. We have um, a couple brand new webinars that are up or in the process of being uploaded for the advisors of some of those programs did some Q&A. We're also happy to connect you with some of those programs in case you're interested in one of them. 
Um, a lot of them are guaranteed seats or guaranteed interviews, accelerated tracks, things like that for our students, or you could just do four years and apply to any um, professional program that you'd like to. But we do have a lot of partnership programs that you can consider. Um, and then about 10% of our students will go straight um, into some sort of long-term compensated service. Um, you see one of the fun facts there, top 10 in small schools producing Peace Corps volunteers, for example. Um, other programs might be things like City Year or Teach for America, um, just to name a few. And so a lot of our students, um, we don't have a, a service requirement in Allegheny, um, but as I mentioned, about 1,800 students uh, last year, our um, students did a you know, uh, over 70,000 hours, I believe it was, of community service, just because they wanted to. Um, and so we're really attracting a lot of students um, that are nationally minded um, in community service. So we do have a lot of resources um, there for students as well. Okay, um, and I'm not sure what year everybody is that's on this call. I'm gonna assume most people are juniors and seniors, but if we have, um, a few students who are first year or sophomores, that's perfectly fine. You can get a jump start. Um, and so everyone might be in a little bit of a different place in their process. So I just want to spend a couple minutes wrapping up before we take questions, um, just talking a little bit about some of the things um, that you can be on the look for, um, specifically at Allegheny, and maybe addressing if there's some seniors out there concerned about applying. Um, under, you know, COVID um, and how that might look a little bit different. So real quickly, what do you need to submit at Allegheny? How do we look at it? How can you help yourself? Um, the first thing to know is that it's always free to apply to Allegheny. We don't believe in that as a barrier. Um, so it never hurts to send in an application. Um, the first step is choosing what type of application you would like to submit. Um, there's three choices. They are the Common App, the Coalition App, or the Allegheny App. They all give us the same exact information, so this is really more of a personal choice. Um, most students will choose the Common Application, and if you're applying to multiple schools and they all accept the Common Application, this is what I would suggest to you. You just go to commonapp.org, again free, you set up an account, and what it does is it allow you um, you fill out one application one time and you can send it then to multiple schools instead of filling out the same information over and over again. Um, and then your, um, you know, your high school and things can upload other documents to it that will get, it's a pretty easy process. The coalition application is very similar to the common application, but it's not accepted at quite as many schools. So it's more of an application that you build along the way and then send out, um, again, free. And then the Allegheny application, is on our website and it can only go to Allegheny. So you can decide based on the schools you're applying to what application you would like to choose. Once we, um, we have your application, you will also need to send in a copy of your high school transcript. Um, just so everyone knows, um, Allegheny does look at both weighted and unweighted GPA. Um, we are looking at grades, we're looking at GPA, but we're also paying a lot of attention to the rigor of your courses. Um, based on the resources of your high school, um, we also look at trends. So maybe you had, you know, a rough transition, you know, in your first year in high school, but then you really take off and we see an upward trend. We definitely account for those types of things. Um, and so we will read your transcripts kind of hopefully more as a narrative and then also with the numerics. We also require a guidance counselor recommendation and a school report. Um, Make sure you check in with your guidance office, college career office, whatever it's called at your school. Um, once you're ready to do your applications to ask how to request those items, don't wait to the day before a deadline to go in and ask a, you know, a guidance counselor for recommendation. They're gonna have a lot of them to do for every student. So it's really important that you figure out your school's personal process for requesting those items. We also require a teacher recommendation. Um, we prefer a teacher, hopefully from your junior or senior of high school, someone who's worked with you more recently in the classroom. However, if you have a very strong relationship with a teacher, you know, you've had earlier on, or maybe you've had them over the course of several years, that's okay too. We'll definitely accept um, whatever teacher recommendation you feel best represents you. I'm gonna come back to standardized test scores. Um, and we also require a personal essay. Real quickly, 
as long as you just write an essay that talks about something I can't really figure out anywhere else in the application or really elaborates on something else um, that's on your application, something that's personal to you, something that's important to you, that's really all we're looking for. We're, you know, this is your place to really make a statement about who you are. Um, you know, it's okay if you didn't, you know, cure cancer, climb Mount Everest, it doesn't have to be something crazy. Um, for example, I read an essay about a girl who loved to garden and she just wrote a couple paragraphs about how she spends her day in the garden and why it's important to her. And that was perfect. I learned so much about her um, and I was able actually to connect her with our garden, which is our car hall garden on campus. So we grow, um, it's a living and learning lab. Um, we grow a lot of food that we eat there, things like that. And so she now actually works in the garden, which is really nice. Um, and just make sure your essay is about you. Um, you'd be surprised how many essays I read about how great another person is. Um, but that other person's not applying to college, you're applying to college. So make sure we're just learning something about you. Um, and test scores. Allegheny has been test optional for five years. So our process is already set up to account for students who either didn't have a chance to take test scores or maybe don't wanna submit ACT or SAT scores. Um, we're a very holistic application review. Um, how students do on a standardized test doesn't align very well with our curriculum being really experiential based. And so it doesn't really tell us very much about how students are gonna do at Allegheny. So if you're a student who takes standardized testing, thinks it's pretty on par with your transcript or maybe better, you know, you're really proud of what your scores reflect, by all means send them and we definitely wanna acknowledge them in the admissions process. If you're like, you know what, it wasn't my best, you know, that's fine. You can mark test optional and it's like they don't exist. We kind of just wait your transcript twice is the best way that I can explain it. Um, but you can still qualify for full scholarship and everything. Full scholarship at Allegheny right now is um, up to $38,000 per year. Um, that's, so that's the highest merit that you can receive. Um, and that is renewable every single year at Allegheny as long as you pass your courses. That is based on the holistic reading of your application. So spending a few extra minutes on application could be a few extra dollars in your pocket, which is always great. Um, the other thing, since we're kind of talking about financial aid, is if you're going to apply for aid, you only have to submit the FAFSA, which stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid, emphasis on the first F being free. Um, so you should never have to pay to submit the FAFSA anywhere. It's just FAFSA.gov. This is something that you will do every year that you were enrolled as a student. Um, it becomes available in October of your senior year of high school. So you'll want to send the FAFSA to every school that you're applying to. That's the only form that Allegheny needs. Um, I suggest to families, even if you don't think you'll qualify for federal aid, to still do the FAFSA. There is institutional need-based money that you can still qualify for, and that's free money. You have to do the FAFSA to qualify. The last thing on this page that I want to go over is the decision plan, um, because this is where a lot of students, I think, get a little tripped up because there's a lot of really similar language out there. So I'm hopefully going to give you a few tips on how to tell the difference. So once you decide what kind of application you're going to submit, you have to decide what decision plan you'd like to submit under. And you have a couple of different choices. So some students will like to do an early decision application. Early decision the easiest way to remember is you've made a decision. You have a number one choice school. If you are accepted there, that's where you're going. Um, you're not worried about any other factors, the main one being financial. Usually you will not know your financial aid award before you get, um, before you have to submit under early decision, which for us is a November 15th deadline. If you're considering early decision, you can only apply on, to one school under an early decision plan. And you might wanna check out um, if the school has a net price calculator, any school that gives federal aid has to have one um, on their financial aid website. What a net price calculator is, is it simply says, historically, people in similar financial situations to you received this type of aid. So it's kind of like a ballpark estimate. Um, so that's something if you're thinking early decision, you definitely wanna do, but anybody can fill that out at any time. If you're like, you know, Allegheny seems really cool, but I, you know, I, I want to apply to a couple of schools, see what happens. I'm not quite ready to commit. I would recommend an early action application. Um, for us, this is the December 1st deadline. This is your way to say Allegheny is maybe among some of my top schools. I would like Allegheny to take action earlier on my admissions decision. I want to find out a little bit sooner. Um, for us, you usually know by the holidays, um, the end of January at the very latest. 
Um, there's also early um, action two, I'm sorry, early decision two, early decision two. Um, basically that's, you know, I didn't hit early decision one. I, you know, was still kind of in my search process, but now I've really decided Allegheny is the number one place for me. You can do that um, as a February 1st deadline. And then we also have regular decision, which is a February 15th deadline. Um, the main difference between early action, regular decision is simply when you find out. Um, if you apply under regular decision, you usually don't find out until March. Um, so it's just a little bit of shorter window to that May 1st national decision deadline where you have to decide where you're going to attend. Um, there's no right or wrong decision plan. It's really based on you and your personal process um, and also when you have time to do your applications. Um, at Allegheny, everyone is eligible for the same level of scholarship regardless of your decision plan. Um, and if you're unsure what decision plan to pick, you can always just check in with the school and your counselor and we can definitely help walk you through um, don't feel like you have to definitely understand everything. That's why our counselors and our job title is to help, help you know, counsel you through those processes. All right. Um, and so I, we have about nine minutes or so where we're gonna be able to answer some questions. Um, and real quickly before we do, um, this is my email, rsloan at allegheny.edu. So if you come up with a question later or for some reason we don't get to it, you can definitely just reach out and I will definitely get back to you. I'm usually pretty good, usually 24 to 48 hours, you can get a response. Um, we also have um, in-person visits for seniors right now. Um, so you can sign up on our website for tours and counselor sessions. Um, and we also are doing a lot of virtual programming. So some of um, our sessions are um, upcoming, some are already recorded and on there. So you can check those out as well. All right, so I'll leave this up while we're answering um, some Q and A, and we have a couple questions that came in. And so between myself and Hannah, we're going to try to tackle um, some of these in the couple minutes that we have. Okay, so I'm going to go, let's see. Um, we'll just go down the list, I guess. So the first question we have is, can we describe some of the study abroad opportunities that Allegheny has to offer? Hannah, have you haven't had, have you had the opportunity to study abroad? yet? I've had the opportunity. Unfortunately, it was canceled due to COVID. Uh, it was supposed to happen over the summer, but Allegheny has a lot of really great opportunities. Um, the International Education Office and the Gateway can help you go study abroad for a semester, for a full year, or even for a one to two week experiential learning trip, which is what I was planning on doing. Yeah. Where was your trip supposed to be to? Um, Scandinavia and Wales specifically. Great. That um, experiential learning trip that Hannah is talking about, there's kind of two main ways to study abroad at Allegheny. So we do have that really traditional experience that you think of where you might, you know, go away for about a semester. Um, we have over 30 different partnerships across the globe. That means that we know your credits and your financial aid work between those institutions in Allegheny, but we can also research, you know, other partnerships if there's a program you're really interested in. Um, so that usually would happen in your junior year and you would work with international education in your sophomore year to prepare for that experience. You have to be a declared major to go on one of those trips. Um, Hannah's talking about experiential learning, EL for short. These are summer study abroad, like they start end of May and then go throughout the summer roughly two and a half to three weeks, but they can vary a little bit in length. Um, these are a group of entirely Allegheny students led by a couple Allegheny faculty. Um, it's a cultural and an academic immersion, so you still do get academic credits for going on experiential learning trips. Um, you can do these beginning anytime summer after your first year, all the way through summer after you graduate. So some students will do, you know, one type of study abroad versus the other. Some will do a combination. Um, I know in the past, like, so, you know, Hannah mentioned they were gonna do Scandinavia and Wales. Um, I know um, there's been Italy, India, um, Morocco and the Ukraine, Iceland, Nicaragua, and they're on all different topics. You don't have to be studying in that particular major to go on the trip. Just know, you know, if you went on the geology trip to Iceland and you're a comm arts major, you're just gonna learn about geology while you're there. But it's a group of Allegheny students kind of mixed in all different areas. 
Um, so there's a couple different opportunities. There's always information sessions too, where you can go learn about the different chips before you apply. Um, so yeah, definitely. And if you can study abroad in college, definitely, definitely do so. Um, it definitely gets harder after, <laughs> after you graduate for sure. So good question. Um, I wanna make sure that we do have um, answer some of the other questions. Um, so we have another question here. Um, oh, okay. So this question is about um, if you apply into early decision, um, would you know the financial aid package before you had to commit? So that um, is one of the um, kind of exceptions to early decision is usually no. So when you do apply under an early decision deadline, you sign a form, your school signs a form, your family signs the form that says, I know if I'm accepted, I have committed. Um, you usually don't have your um, financial aid packages at Allegheny until after you have an admissions decision. And so um, that's why we always suggest doing that net price calculator to make sure you're kind of comfortable with that ballpark number um, before you do early decision. If you're worried about, oh my gosh, I applied early decision and I totally didn't understand or have an issue with that, just call us and we'll work with those people on an individual basis. Um, but yes, you usually don't have your financial aid package before you have an admissions decision under any plan. So um, good questions. Okay. And um, we have just a couple more minutes. Um, and so if anyone else has a question, feel free to type it in. Um, Hannah, to kind of wrap up, um, I'm gonna ask, you know, kind of put you on a spot as a student. Um, is there anything in particular that made you choose to come to Allegheny and or do you have any advice for students going through the college search, something you wish you would have known or taken advantage of, something like that? So one of the things that I kind of messed up during my college search is I purposefully ignored colleges that were local to me. Um, I'm from Erie, Pennsylvania, which is not very far from Allegheny. Um, but I really, I spent all year looking at colleges farther away when Allegheny was the right fit for me. Um, I highly recommend doing an on-campus tour if you're able to. It was really the atmosphere, seeing the interaction of the students and professors, stopping in on a class, whether virtual or in person, that really made me realize Allegheny felt like home. And it's that feeling that you get that you can't really describe um, that will tell you what college is the best for you. Thanks, Anna. Um, and I know some of you are not able, to, especially because of COVID, to do on-campus. Um, visits all the time. So we are constantly updating our virtual tours and things like that too. So we're going to try to help you out as much as we can. Um, but we are open almost six days a week for tours. Um, we have an online calendar. So you can just go to allegheny.edu admissions and check out those opportunities. So if we can have you on campus, um, you know, and be safe, we would love to do so. Okay. I didn't see any other questions come in. So if anything comes up later, um, again, you can either email me at rsloan.allegheny.edu or you can use admissions at allegheny.edu also listed here and we'll make sure um, that we connect with you. All right, and so I think that's, that's it for us. Thanks guys. All right, thank you. So thank you so much for presenting and thank you to everyone that joined us. When you go to close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recording. Thank you. Bye now. <laughs>